became the first transgender finalist on America's Next Top Model. She also became the most talked about, the most blogged about, the most Googled woman in top model history. Less than one month ago, Isis underwent genital reassignment surgery. And we've been following Isis from the very beginning of her journey, from being an anatomically male to being a woman that she's always felt that she was. Joining us is Isis and her boyfriend Desmond and her mom Sheree and Dr. Marcy Bowers, the surgeon who performed Isis's very delicate surgery. And by the way, Dr. Bowers is also transgender. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. So, Mama, how are you feeling now that your daughter has gone through this surgery? You were there by her side yeah. through every step of it. Yeah. Um, it was it was fine. It, it was a lot of work. Um, I had to lift her and actually go back to like changing diapers. You so, did? Yeah. So. So it, you had to go back to changing diapers like she was a little baby again. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I have to ask you, changing those diapers, and when you changed those diapers before, it was different, right? A lot different. And now you're changing those diapers and going, oh my gosh, this is so different. Exactly. Yeah. I Did felt you? a little violated. <laughs> you felt a little violated. Uh, tell your mom what the, I, I would love to hear you tell your mom about the support and her being here, there for you and what that meant for you because it's so rare. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are children, mothers of children who, not transgendered, but are gay and will leave their lives and not never speak to them again and excommun excommunicate them from the family. I mean, you went through this process and your mother was there 100%. So I'd love to hear you tell her what her support means to you. Don't be starting it. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you for being there with me. It meant a lot, and I didn't realize it would be so much work for you. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, you've always been there for me, and this just shows that through this, you know, I know that no matter what, you'll always be there for me, and I'll always be there for you. And a lot of what I do is inspired by you and me wanting to help you out because I know you struggle so much and just want to help you out with the future and you know, one day you won't have to struggle anymore. Oh, thank you. That make me proud. And then Dr. Bowers, I understand that you have a nickname for Dr. Bowers now. What's this nickname? She's my mama Marcy. Mama Marcy. <laughs> and these are my two daughters. <laughs> these are your two daughters. So would you say that Isis is a good patient? Oh. Or is she is she uh, well, not I'm, following all of her uh, You know you know we love her. <laughs> <laughs> but she was what we call high maintenance. High maintenance? <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> we actually have a new nickname for, for what ISIS. Is that? And I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what is it? <laughs> we, we call her Boo Boo. <laughs> Boo Boo. High maintenance. She had a little bit of an accident afterwards. And so. <gasps> oh, on blast right now. Is that normal to have a little boo boo no, after no. the surgery? Sometimes these happen. I would say she was typical of our younger patients that need just a little bit more hand holding and uh, they feel a lot more. And I mean, imagine it's, it's just so difficult to go from male anatomy to female anatomy. Yes. And, um, and, and so it's, you know, <laughs> yes, she was delicate. Delicate. <laughs> you know, it's okay that you. He was in the bathroom <laughs> after. I had a colonoscopy, um, and my mom was in the room with me, and I could not stop farting after. <laughs> and, it, and the whole nurses were walking around and trying to pretend like it was normal, but I saw them snickering. Because <laughs> it wasn't just like pop, pop, pop. It was like pop, 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 pop. <laughs> So I'm farting you, boo boo. It's okay, girl. It's all right. So right I know that. <laughs> it wasn't, it's just that, you know, when my first time I got up, I don't have that problem. <laughs> So don't blog about it, <laughs> please. Now, I know there's something called dilating that, uh, that ISIS is supposed to be doing. Explain dilating. Well, um, patients that have gone from male to female in their surgery, they need to keep the vagina open because what the body wants to do is have, it has a tendency to, to scar back. Mm. And so to these close. acrylic to close or, or stenose. Um, is the medical term, but okay. we keep it open with a process called dilation, which is the placement of some uh, uh, acrylic rods inside the vagina. These seven inch long rods, which are kind of make a girl blush when you first see them, um, they need to be placed there three times a day. For, for how long? Three months, and then the schedule gets less frequent. Got it. And does it hurt? To um, it's not pleasurable. It's, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, Mommy and Desmond already 
and Mama Marcy, you know, are you, you missing one, you gotta get to work. I'm like, okay. Gotta do the daily. I mean, it's really not, it don't take that long to do, but. But if you don't do it, what could happen if she doesn't dilate? Well, the area can re reclose again or scar back. And, and so then, actually, the, the, we came back one night and we had been out a bit and had some fun. Um, but we came back and had a little um, mother daughter, sorry, mother daughter <laughs> pep talk about dilating because she said to me, I, it hurts too much, I can't do it. And I'm like, oh my God, we came all this way. You are not going to lose your. You know what? <laughs> and so let's talk about that. So is she dilating for s to be able to have sex? Yes. Is that what it is yes. for? To keep the vagina open uh -huh. and to allow, um, you know, potentially <laughs> <laughs> some action. So Desmond, are you over there going, come on, baby, you got to dilate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I have to ask you about the surgery. Can you take us through the steps of, of, of making the penis, the vagina? How does that well, happen? You, you know, it's you know, you said one time, snip, snip. It's not snip, snip. Mm -hmm. It's more like rearranging the deck chairs. We're actually using um, homologous or same tissue parts from male anatomy and converting those to female. So the head of the penis becomes the clitoris. Um, the skin of the penis becomes part of the vagina. The labia are created out of part of the scrotal sac, and uh, part of the scrotum is used to lengthen the vagina. So wow! It's, it, I heard it's, it's almost involved. like turning. It's a little bit like turning the, the male anatomy inside, inside out into the inside. But the components are divided. Wow! Very interesting. Mm -hmm. We will be right back.